Hey, welcome back to No Hype Beer Reviews. Unless it's your first time, then welcome. Please consider subscribing. If you do, hit the notification bell, get all the updates. Very right, Saturday's video, it's Saturday. On Saturdays, I do Cellar Saturday, where I drink something off of someone's shelf. Uh, this one is not off my shelf. This is uh, courtesy of Scott. Thanks so much, Scott. I really appreciate it. Uh, from uh, Eat, Drink, Listen. So, man, talk about a brewery that I don't get, or we, well, none of us get beers like this anymore. So, Avery Brewing Company. The Demons of Ale. So this is called The Beast. It's a Grand Cru Ale. Uh, so <laughs> I thought it was a little lower than this. 17.2% ABV. Uh, and it is from 2015. So it's a little over seven years old. Uh, July 2015 specifically. Uh, ale with raisins, dates, molasses, and honey. Brewed and bottled by Avery in uh, uh, Boulder, Colorado. The Beast is a seducer, accommodating, complicated, powerful, dark, unfiltered, and created to last the ages. Ages. Beyond this, it's futile, futile to attempt to describe him. He will unveil himself differently to each of his followers. The mark is in his constitution. Brewed with Rocky Mountain water, two-row malted barley, honey malt, and imported Belgian specialty grains, aromatic, pale wheat, roasted wheat, and special B, hops, magnum, uh, go, Golena, go, Golena, uh, Saz, Hallertau, Tetanang, <laughs> and I shouldn't have read the side of this, and Hirschbrusher, Hirschbrucher. Some hops I've heard of, some hops I have not heard of. I'll put it that way. Brewing sugars, uh, raisins, dates, blackstrap, molasses, alfalfa honey, terminado sugar, and dark Belgian candy sugar, and a helium of a Belgian yeast strand. We got through that. We, we got through that. Um, not well, but we got through it. <laughs> smells good. I did check. I still have two uh, Uncle Jacob's stouts from them. Um, up, you can't see them. They're behind some of their stuff. But uh, yeah, definitely a brewery. I, I used to drink a lot of these big beers. I've never had this beer, but uh, a lot of these bigger beers from them. Uh, beautiful, like, red into brown color. Um, almost a little bit of purple. Eh, not quite purple. I guess it is like this pink orange or pink red into uh, brown I don't know it's very interesting color like super dark honey almost it, it looks familiar but I'm not pulling a better color descriptor uh what is that about half a finger yeah a little over half a finger of khaki almost exactly khaki color head uh tiny bubbles some small bubbles medium size pretty nice head retention for how high the ABV is some legs, not a lot of lacing. Looks beautiful. Let's get into the aroma. This smells like uh, uh, an aged um, American style barley wine to me. You're getting kind of like like dead hops, a um, little bit of like a mint menthol thing. It smells good, I should say that, but because I just realized maybe some of this stuff doesn't like stale hops. Probably doesn't sound good, or like de a dead hops as I call them sometimes. Honey, it's the, yeah, it's not full on pine. It, it hits a little bit more like minty to me in an interesting, cool way. Big molasses. I mean, it's huge molasses. A little bit of like that honey thing, but like the molasses is is over the moon. It's probably the Belgian candy in this sugar. Um, yeah, I mean, as much as I went barley wine, there's a little bit of a, this quad element also, which is cool. Big dried fruits such as raisins, dates, and prunes. Yeah, it, it a little bit of like baked goods, but like the if the baked goods have like molasses and like raisins in there. A little caramelized sugar as well, without being full, just caramel. Really cool. Um, it smells good. Like it smells interesting and, and is like definitely showing age, but it also does smell good. I'm super excited to try this. Cheers. Thanks again, Scott.
I'm going to say the taste follows the nose in a lot of ways, including this beer is both super interesting to drink at this point and also pretty darn tasty. It's not the best aged beer I've ever had, don't get me wrong, but it's certainly not like some abomination at this point, like it was aged too long or whatever. Um, but like, not in a like wet cardboard kind of a way, but like I was saying with the aroma, you can tell that this has some serious age on it. But like if you like, again, like this like molasses, almost like, yeah, like a stale hop thing. It, it, I don't know, it's, just, it's really cool. And from a beer reviewer point of view, I really like how easily I can identify this taste aged, which is cool, like that oxidized thing. Um, but yeah, man, a lot of the dried fruits, the raisins, dates, figs, like I said before, um, some prunes. Um, I, I can't, man, a lot of like the aroma. I can't go full caramel, but oddly some like caramelized sugar, burnt sugar notes. The upteenth time, huge molasses. The aftertaste has almost like a whisper of smoke, which unexpected and cool. I mean, I guess it could kind of make sense based on what's in here. A um, little bit of warmth in the chest. I don't taste any alcohol on the taste, which is nuts at 17%, you know? You know what reminds, uh, it reminds me a lot of... Um, is it the... Raison de Extra, maybe, from Dogfish Head, with a lot of age on it. Which makes sense, because that's got, like, figs and dates, too, right? El brewed with raisins. Okay. Close enough, everyone watching. No, 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 that's not the beer I'm thinking of. Uh, I don't know if I have one anymore. They had that barley wine. Old school, right? Yeah. I don't... Anyway, it doesn't matter. That's, that's a different beer, but it reminds me of that beer with a lot of age on it. So, like... Yeah, really hard to get this. I mean, it'd be hard to probably get old school. Um, but like that one, if you've had Dogfish Head's old school at some age, puts you in proximity what this beer is tasting like if you haven't had this beer before. Um, yeah, as I'm talking, a little bit of alcohol on my breath. With how those hops are hitting... It is a little bit more piney and less minty in the taste. And, and when I say minty, I don't mean like it doesn't taste like I just brushed my teeth. This screams Christmas beer to me. Because you're getting like that little bit like that pine thing, which makes you think of like Christmas trees. You're getting, you know, some of, like I was saying the aroma too. Um, I think it was the aroma I was saying at this point like this this baked goods with molasses and raisins and maybe even like some cinnamon and things like that some of these baking spices um with like a sugar glaze yeah kind of yeah like and i think because it's like somewhat quaddy somewhat barley whiny um these like big beers I like to drink around christmas time so it's also kind of just like my habits um yeah, I, I think the best way to sum it up one more time is this beer is both equally parts interesting and tasty. Um, it's not blowing my mind, um, and it's certainly not like, oh my God, I can't believe I have to drink this. Um, it is good, and it is a really good reminder of what uh, aged beer notes can be. Um, things are melted together, which is one of the best things about aging beer, in my opinion, is, is some of, like some sharp notes can get uh, well-rounded and melted together. And ne although I never had this beer fresh, it's a very well-rounded and, and melted beer uh, in this flavor profile. Yeah, I, I really like this experience a lot. Thank you, Scott. I really appreciate it. Uh, have you guys had this beer before? Have you had anything from Avery ever you want to talk about, whether it's today or 10 years ago, 20 years ago, whatever, comment section below. Let's get a conversation going. I actually don't know if they were a brewery 20 years ago. Once you're done doing that, make sure you check me out on Instagram and Untapped. It's no hype beer reviews at both those places. Please, please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, imbibe. Cheers, everyone.